Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm reviewing the awesome IDAS GNB. This is a very unique astrophotography filter in that it combines the dual narrowband properties of the IDAS NBZ, so you get the oxygen 3 and the hydrogen alpha bands transmitted through the filter, but it also transmits a large portion of the near infrared band, and that is for imaging galaxies. So this is IDAS's Galaxy and Nebula Booster filter, the GNB. So let's take a look at it. When it comes to recommending cameras for the IDAS GNB, the camera I would recommend the most is the one I don't have, and that's the ZWO 585MC Pro. That is a new camera and it has very good infrared sensitivity. So if you want to image galaxies, that 585MC Pro with that smaller sensor, that's gonna work excellent for galaxies, plus that near infrared compatibility with the, the GNB. Oh man, that would be an awesome camera with this filter and I'd love to try it out. So if you have a 585 NC Pro and an IDAS GNB, definitely leave a comment and let me know how it works because I'd love to try those two and, and pair them together. If you're just gonna use the GNB for its nebula performance, you know, standard cameras are gonna work out great. I really like the ASI 2600 with the Sony IMX 571 sensor, but yeah, if I could recommend one camera, the 585 NC Pro just on paper is like a match made in heaven with the GNB. What makes this filter so unique is that you have a broadband pass in the near infrared. It's about 100 nanometers wide from roughly 800 to 900 nanometers. And what that does is it really eliminates a lot of the light pollution you see with imaging galaxies in the optical band, and it allows you to pull out a lot of the detail that you might be missing in your galaxy images and really allow you to image them from light polluted skies. And the big reason for this is LED streetlights. So if you look at the black body radiation spectrum of like a sodium or mercury light, most of the light is given off as infrared. The light that you see is actually not the biggest part of that spectrum or the most intense part of that spectrum. And that's why mercury and sodium lights are very inefficient. When LED lights came out, you know, those don't give off a lot of heat. Most of the light is given off in the optical band. So if you can use a filter in the infrared band, you don't even see those LED lights, and that allows you to pull in a lot of light from those galaxies and not have them be affected by light pollution. So the GNB totally takes advantage of that. Very cool idea from IDAS. Now the challenge with infrared light is a lot of cameras aren't terribly sensitive to it. Their quantum efficiency in the infrared is pretty low. So I've been using the Sony IMX 571 sensor in my ZWO ASI 2600 cameras, and it seems to work okay but I would love to try this GNB filter with the new ZWO 585MC Pro. That has a very sensitive sensor when it comes to in infrared light. So I think this filter with that new camera would absolutely be a perfect match. So I've gotten some pretty good results with the GNB, uh, but if you really wanna take advantage of the filter, definitely find yourself a camera that is sensitive to that near infrared light. As with my other IDAS dual narrowband filters, the GNB makes imaging nebula very easy. The oxygen three band is transmitted about 95%, so incredible performance there, as well as the hydrogen alpha band. It's also transmitted at about 95%. So the GNB really does make imaging emission nebula, planetary nebula, and supernova remnants pretty easy. One thing I like about IDAS is they include the substrate thickness of their filters on the box. So this has a thickness of two millimeters. That results in an optical thickness of 0.68 millimeters. That's the amount of back focus that you have to add to your imaging train to compensate for this filter glass. Now I say this with every single filter review. If you haven't seen my episode of Back Focus 101 on how filters affect back focus, be sure to check it out because I'll explain the math behind it, but basically you take the thickness of the substrate and divide it by three to get that optical length. One challenge you might run into when imaging galaxies with the GNB is desaturation of colors. Now, if you've watched this channel for a long time, you'll know that I don't love to process images. They usually take me about 15 minutes and I'm not very good at it. If you're good at image processing, getting those colors back into the galaxies should be pretty simple. IDAS has several images posted on their website that are absolutely amazing of galaxies taken with the GNB. Another issue you might run into is some star halos. And that's actually not the problem of the filter itself. It's a problem with the camera. Most cameras, their anti-reflective coatings are optimized for optical light, not infrared light. So you could get some reflection there and get some halos with the GNB just because you're primarily shooting those galaxies in infrared light. 
Now, if you're using the dual narrowband aspects of the filter, you're not gonna see those star halos really, but when you're using it for those galaxies and you have like a camera that's more optimized for infrared, you might see some star halos show up. But overall, just being able to cut out that light pollution and an image in infrared, you're getting a lot of details on galaxies and they, they can look pretty amazing. One thing I love about IDAS as a company is they're very transparent when it comes to their filters. So just how bad is the star haloing in the infrared band? Well, they actually compare it to the NBZ star halos and give us a quantifiable number. So if you're using the Sony IMX294 sensor with the GNB, the NBZ has a magnitude of one for star haloing. The GNB has a magnitude of eight. So they're very transparent about that. With the Sony IMX585 sensor that I just mentioned, which I think is a perfect match with the GNB, if you look at that, again, the NBZ has a magnitude of one for star halos. The GNB in the Sony IMX585 would have a magnitude of 6.3. So the star haloing is a lot worse than in the IDAS NBZ when you're shooting through the, uh, the infrared band. All right, everyone, well, that wraps up my review of the awesome IDAS GNB. So whether you're imaging nebula or galaxies, this filter should perform nicely for you. That said, if you do happen to pair the ZWO ASI 585 MC Pro camera with this filter, please let me know how it performs in the comments below because I am very interested in pairing that camera with this filter and doing more galaxy imaging. So as always, I appreciate you watching. Have a great day and clear skies, unlike what I have here. <laughs>